Thank you, everybody. So it's great. I'm so happy to see you guys in the CAST meeting. So my topic today is basic step and management of lumbar endoscopic VLVD procedures. Before uh, getting started, I'd like to say good man. Good man means good morning, afternoon, night. Also good man, evening. Because of time gap, we'd like to say like this. Okay, uh, this is my disclosure. Uh, recently, uh, I have been surprised to figure out the dramatic change in the lactation of endoscopic spine surgery has been taking place rapidly. Also, we have the different spec of the endoscope from the first and second and third generation now. So using this kind of the upgrade and a little bit big uh, walking channel endoscope, we can treat the spinal uh, stenosis using the uh, endoscopic VLVD and also the rhetorisis decompression is treated by the endoscope. So walking channel endoscope has the, this kind of full component, main component. So Dr. Dong Chan Lee already talked about the basic scope of endoscope. So different vendors uh, from Germany and the States and China and the so Thomas Korean also they have the uh, their own the endoscopic system. So basic uh, step for lumbar endoscopic ULBD. So many guys ask, have asked me the how can I start where is the target starting point? So I'd like to say that they identify the target area. That, that is the inferior medial edge of the laminar. Always you should check the uh, image intensifier like that. We have the different, because of the, we, we need to bone walk first. So internal decompression, utilizing the various kind of the endoscope birds. So, we have the different kind of round shape and burst type and the, also the teeth control, the articulator as well. This is the uh, basic step, how, I, how we access the laminar, inferior medial edge of the cranial laminar, and then we can start the drilling. Also, we have the different, uh, this kind of articulator is very nice tool because of the endoscope has the, uh, 15 to 20 degree of the scope optics. So it is very nice to approach the contract contractor side and the corner of the hip shutter side as well. The size of the endoscopic punch is, this is the four millimeter punch. So actually same size of the uh, punch, kerosene punch in the, use the in microscope and open surgery and remove the ipsia tail uh, flabum step by step. Also the uh, started to compress the upper edge of the L5 laminar and then uh, accessed the roof of rotulisis. This is the contractor side, contractor cranial laminar. Uh, once you achieve the enough bony walk, you can see the edge of the lymph flabum there. And this is the contractile IAP and this SAP and the contractile rotulisis decompression could be uh, drilled out. Because the optics have the, art, uh, have the 15 and 20 degree, you can also see the very well, the contractile edge of the uh, lymph flabum as well. It is a strong advantage of endoscope. Of course, you can see the this kind of the contractile over the top procedures and the neural structure under the microscope. The power, but the power, the uh, visions of the endoscope uh, probably superior uh, to the microscope because the optics of the lens is just over the dura, right? And then 
after remover detached all the way of the lymph problem, we can re uh, decompress the uh, kennel after the envelope resection of the lymph problem. I love to de decompress the, re remove the uh, lymph problem by envelope the fashion. Okay. Let me see the case, other case. This is 68 female patient. You can see the uh, digital spawn at the three, four level and the four, five, and five S on the uh, black disc as well. The x-ray shows the little bit the spawn recess at the three, four level. It's a very common uh, patient, all right? So in this situation, you, you're you going to have the multi-level fusion. There's no blame for that, right? So diagnosis is important. So radiologic diagnosis and the symptomatic diagnosis. And the surgeon, we love to approach to solve the problem of symptomatic diagnosis. We have the different the decompression skill set or the fusion level. This is a basic the tool, how can it prep the muscle by the endoscope? This is obturator. And then uh, this is the uh, follow-up x-ray. There is a still no, no instability after the compression, right? And this is how much the bony decompression I have made. You can see the well pre nearly total preserved deposit joint. This is the possible by the endoscope. By the under the tubular discectomy, microscopic surgery is not the technical tricky because the, the size of the tube is a little bit quite pretty uh, bigger. You know, this is very nice example of the surgery compared to the microscopic surgery. Patient had this uh, moderate spinal stenosis and big size of disc herniation, both side. Patient also had the undertreated, the chronic myeloid leukemia. W what about the platelet count? But the, all the, 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 the uh, rare findings is not bad, but the, we have the function is not the quite normal. This is example, the level of the L45. You can see the big the fragment. Look, what does it look like? Like the yeah, come on. <laughs> and the four five level, I had this is post op MRI. So let me have address the keys. What did I do at this level? What do you think about it? Right. What about the three four level? There is also the big honey and the three four, and the well decompression. So what did I do at this level? Can you guess that? So because of teaching. My job is teaching, so I, I, I did the endoscopic laminotomy and discectomy for file level and the and microscopic tubular surgery discectomy three four level. What happened? Let me compare the post op MRI like that. Can you see the preserved facet joint? What did it happen? So, what about the uh, changes of the disc herniation? Because of the endoscope, we have the powerful tool of dura retraction and the, the annular modulation by the trigger flex. So this happened, right? This explained. What about the uh, X-ray follow-up, the one-year follow-up? No disc height change, no the instability occur, right? So this is result by the lumbar endoscopic ULBD. So it's going to be safe and promising clinical result. It provides the adequate circumferential decompression with of stenosis with uh, proper neural protections. We can decompress internal canal and retrolysis. It doesn't matter. And we, we can, I'd like to highlight this point, stability. We can preserve the stability with less violation of the motion segments. This looks the uh, very nice target-oriented approach regarding preservation of facet and skip the interlaminal window. And the indication, we can treat the almost all kind of the disc herniation, also the spinal stenosis, regardless of degree of the uh, stenosis, sure grade, right? Thank you very much.